Hello students, this is lecture number 8, 9 and 10 and in this lecture we are going to discuss about the time domain analysis of linear time invariant systems and uh, we will be focusing on the method convolution integral. So far in previous lectures we have uh, already discussed about the mathematical modeling of uh, signals and also we have learned about mathematical modeling of systems. Now, uh, we will apply input to the system and see how the system responds in time domain and this is uh, short in short is called time domain analysis of systems and the system which we will be focusing on would be linear and time invariant systems. Always the fundamental goal in designing the system is that you get desired output whenever you design a system whether it is a circuit maybe it is designed to perform as a low pass filter for example in rc circuit then obviously you would require you would want that circuit to perform well right so how would you know that it is performing well by analyzing the system right and how you will analyze you will apply an input to the system and then you will record the output and then you can actually analyze the system from the output how it is behaving whether it is stable whether output is within the limits that you desire or it is not or it is deviating from the desired output there is a large error in the output so you can actually uh, analyze the system in that way and analysis can be done in many ways like in time domain when you apply a time domain signal and uh, you record the time domain output analysis can also be performed in frequency domain when you apply a sinusoidal input of different frequencies at the input of the circuit or the system and then you record the output and uh, in the output basically you see whether uh, the frequency is deviating from the input frequency or the phase is deviating from the phase input phase or the magnitude of the signal is varying from as compared to the signal that is applied. So in today's lecture however we will be focusing on time domain analysis. In time domain analysis again there are many methods available. Uh, you can perform the time dom domain analysis uh, using uh, you know solution of differential equations that actually describe the system as I told you in uh, previous lecture uh, in lecture where we learned about the uh, modeling of uh, systems that all the dynamic systems their mathematical equations are basically differential equations right so when you model a system using differential equation then you can find out the response of the system by solving the differential equation so that is one of the way to solve to uh, analyze the system in time domain. Another way is to use the convolution integral that we will be discussing in today's lecture. The convolution technique uh, is basically used to find out the response of a system for any given input and it is basically based on two points. One is the finding the response of an LTI system to a unit impulse occurring at t equal to 0. So, for a convolution integral, you must know the impulse response of the system at t equal to 0. So, that is the one first fundamental thing that you require to find out the response of the system using convolution method, the impulse response of a system at t equal to 0. And the next thing that is required is representation of the input signal as a linear combination of impulses. Uh, this second method we discussed while we were discussing the impulse signal in lecture number 2 or 3 I guess and I told you any kind of signal can be represented as a linear combination of impulses. Right? So, this is the second fundamental requirement of uh, convolution decaler. If you can do these two things then you can find out the response of the system using convolution method. So, the use of convolution technique begins with the assumption that the response to a unit impulse occurring at t equal to 0 has already been found. So, in this lecture now on, 
uh, we will consider that the impulse response of the system is known. Right? Obviously, we will learn how to find out the impulse response of the system in next coming lectures, but for now, we will assume that the impulse response of the system is known and we will represent the impulse response of the system by h of t. Right? So, h of t is basically the unit impulse response of the system that we want to analyze. Now, the second requirement is to represent the signal that is being applied as input of the system as a linear combination of impulses. Right? So, for that let us consider this signal x of t. It is a continuous time signal and it is a time domain signal that varies with time. You can see in this uh, figure x of t uh, is varying with time and if we want to analyze any given system uh, by applying this input to the system then we uh, using convolution integral then we have to represent this signal as a linear combination of impulses. Right? So, in order to do that what we will do that we will approximate x of t by another signal which is basically the combination of different pulses each pulse of width t p. Right. So, we will approximate uh, response by approximating the signal as a sequence of contiguous rectangular pulses all of the same width t p. Right. So, we will actually break the continuous time signal into uh, signal which is combination of successive pulses and each pulse is of width t p and then we will find out the response of the system by applying each pulse separately and then we can actually combine the responses to find out the final response right because the system is linear and time invariant so obviously if you if you combine all the inputs together and apply it to the system you'll get same output or if you apply each pulse separately and then combine the responses of uh, each pulse then you get the same output as well if the system is linear and time invariant and this is called the superposition property that we have learned in the last lecture so since we are uh, studying about the LTI system. So, we can actually find out the response of the system either by applying this signal continuously, uh, break the signal into different pulses and then apply each pulse separately and find out the response by adding all the responses together. Now, moving on. Now, let us represent the approximate signal uh, mathematically and for that uh, we will use rectangular function, rectangular pulse function to represent the pulse and uh, you can see where these pulses you know starting from x of 0 from origin then are there, there are so many delayed pulses and then time advanced pulses. So, uh, this basically uh, represents the pulse occurring at t equal to 0 which is x of 0 x of 0 is the amplitude of the pulse at t equal to 0 and then the pulse occurring at t equal to 0 then next pulse x of t p is the amplitude of that pulse this one and it is delayed by t p right. similarly this pulse is represented by this function right? x of minus t p the amplitude of the pulse and rectangular function t plus t p is actually pulse occurring t p times before t equal to 0. Right? So, in this way you can represent all the pulses occurring before t equal to 0 and after t equal to 0 using the rectangular pulse function. So, this uh, this function here represents the amplitude and this function represents the pulse function or using the summation you can represent the signal in this form. 
where n is equal to minus infinity to infinity because signal expands from minus infinity to plus infinity then x of n t p and this rectangular pulse function t minus n t p upon t p. So, this is the representation of signal in terms of pulses and that is approximate signal right you can see it is approximately equal to this one obviously this approximation would be better if t p is made very small right the lower the value of t p the approximation now let us uh, consider accurate. this signal and let us break this signal into pulses right. so this signal is now broken into pulses which can be represented using this equation now pictorially we can uh, see here that the signal is broken into different pulses and then we can actually add all these pulses together to form the signal x of t and pulses are separated and then applied to the system and then the output of each pulse is recorded and then all the outputs are added to find out the combined response this is what happens in uh, convolution method now let us assume that uh, when a when a single pulse is applied to the system at t equal to 0 and the width of the pulse is tp the response of the system is hp of t which is called the unit pulse response right? so which is shown in this figure you can see when a single pulse is applied this one uh, at t equal to 0 and this is unit pulse unit pulse means the area under the pulse is 1 so obviously the width of the pulse when width of the pulse is tp then height would be 1 upon tp in that way the area of the pulse would be 1 and it is called unit pulse right and the corresponding response is called unit pulse response which is represented by hp of t right so the unit pulse is represented by this function uh, height is 1 upon tp the amplitude and the time window is tp right? rectangular pulse tp it starts from minus 1 upon tp to plus 1 upon tp all right so the response system is called unit pulse response now as we discussed the and sum of the individual the pulses slide. is the approximation of x of t and uh, the approximate response can be found similarly by applying the approximation of x of t to the system right. in this way when all the pulses are separated and then combined and then applied to the system and output is recorded so this is one of the way but this is not how we do in convolution in convolution what we do we apply each pulse separately and then find out the response by the application of this input and then apply next pulse and then next pulse and then next pulse and so on so all the pulses are applied separately and the response is recorded and then all the responses you can see here are added together to find out the final response this is how Hi, so now it is done we can represent the input signal in the form of unit pulses this one right so instead of a rectangular function we are multiplying this rectangular function with 1 upon tp now this rectangular function represents the unit pulse in fact many unit pulses shifted by some time which is defined by the value of n and tp and in order to balance the equation we have multiplied tp here right so these these represents the shifted unit pulses and these represent the amplitude of these pulses right. so when this input is applied to the linear and time invariant system then 
response produced by the system would be unit pulse response scaled by this function right. so invoking the linearity and time invariance property the response to each of these pulses must be unit pulse response at p of t and amplitude scaled by tp xn of tp and the time shifted from the origin the same amount as the pulse so we can write down the response of the system using this equation right so where uh, this uh, when this pulse is applied to the system the response of the system is represented by unit pulse response and it would be multiplied with this constant multiplied with this constant which is amplitude of now the in this and the next slide and uh, the effect of, of the corresponding reducing response. the value of tp is demonstrated right. so in this uh, slide we have chosen the value of tp equal to 0 0.2 and we know that the reducing the value of tp would be make approximation better so x of t is approximated by pulses of width tp which is equal to 0 0.2 and uh, when tp is 0 0.2 uh, unit impulse and unit pulse responses are compared unit impulse response in this figure is represented by this bold line and this this one is the unit pulse response so you can see that unit impulse response here we have some error right approximation is not quite accurate but as the time is uh, greater than this value you can see that impulse response and the pulse response are quite similar so still we have uh, you know uh, some error in this region initially when time is small and the corresponding response when you know and the bold line represents the exact response and this line uh, represents the approximate response right now, now let's see what happens when we use tp equal to 0 0.1 now you can see x of t and the approximation using pulses much uh, you know much better and here also you can see the unit impulse response and the unit pulse response are also very closer to each other and you can see here the res corresponding responses the exact response and the approximate response are almost same right. so uh, you can see that uh, using convolution method if tp the width of the time pulses are uh, chosen appropriately we can find out the exact response of the system now before moving on to the next slide uh, i would like to tell you something about numerical integration and uh, i know that you are not already familiar with this method probably and uh, numerical integration is basically finding out the integration of uh, any function uh, when function value exact value is not known right for example f of x is a function which is a random function and we cannot represent this function by any mathematical expression then what we do we break this function into pulses just like we did in the last example just like we broke uh, the input signal uh, into different pulses right and this is exactly what we do in uh, numerical integration we break the f of x function into pulses and then we find out the area of that pulse separately and uh, finally the area of all the pulses are added together to find out area under this curve and which is basically integral of f of x right and here delta x represents the pulse width which is tp in our uh, you know discussion and x equal to a is the starting point of the function x equal to b is the ending point which is actually the limit of integral and uh, this is how you can actually find out the integration of a system of a function when the function is not known or it is very complicated right. so you can break the function into the different smaller areas and then find out the area of uh, each pulse separately and then all these 
areas together you can find out integration that way and that is called numerical integration and this is what we are going to do with our approximation that we did in the last slides now uh, as tp is approaches zero the summation becomes an integral the approximation becomes accurate right so approximation becomes exact when tp is smaller so this summation would be same as the integral and this tp is basically delta ta and uh, this uh, x and tp is basically x of ta which is the input signal and 1 upon tp now this unit pulse actually becomes unit impulse when tp is very small right as you know unit impulse function is the function which has uh, almost zero bits so when tp is very small when tp is approaching zero then this rectangular pulse function becomes unit impulse function right which is represented by delta t minus tau so this equation this summation can be represented by integral so x of t the input signal which was represented by summation sign is now represented by this integral when tp is small so x of t is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of t and delta t minus ta d ta similarly we can represent the corresponding response using integral here when tp is very small or approaching zero this summation would be replaced by integral from minus infinity to infinity this tp is delta ta and uh, x of n tp is basically the input that is applied x of ta and this is actually a unit pulse response but when tp is very small it becomes unit impulse response h of t minus ta so we can represent this summation the response y of t in terms of integral y of t equal to minus infinity to infinity x of t into h of t minus ta d tau and uh, as tp approaches zero the unit pulse response as i told you hp t minus n tp approaches unit impulse response h of t minus ta so we can represent this unit pulse response by unit impulse response when tp is very small this integral is called the convolution integral and it, it, it is one of the popular ways to find out the response of the system and the convolution operation is represented by this asterisk sign so when x of t and h of t are convolved together we can write the convolution in this form x of t asterisk h of t and it is equal to this integral so convolution is basically area under the product of x of t into h of t minus tau for different values of t now let us solve an example to understand the operation of convolution uh, deeply so let us consider the two functions h of t which is the unit impulse response of certain system and x of t is the input signal applied to the system and we want to find out the response of the system whose impulse response is given by h of t and this is input applied to the system and let's see what output produced what would be the output produced by the system right so h of t the maximum amplitude of h of t is equal to 2 when t equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 when t is 1 so it, it its time duration is from 0 to 1 and maximum amplitude is 2 Similarly, x of t is from uh, a rectangular pulse of amplitude 2 and the time duration is from minus 1 to 1. Now, we can find out the response of the system when input x of t is applied using the convolution integral right? by applying the convolution operation. So, x, we, want, we need to find out uh, x of t asterisk h of t and which is equal to this and it is equal to y of t 
ఒకటి Right, the integrand in the convolution integral is x of ta into h of t minus ta, right? So, we have to transform our functions x of t and h of t in terms of x of ta and h of t minus ta. So, the since the variable of integration in the convolution integral is ta, we must represent x of t as a function of ta, right? So, x of t is simply represented by x of ta right so the same exact function only the independent variable instead of t is now ta similarly we have to represent h of t in terms of h of t minus ta but it is not as simple right because x of t is simply x of ta but h of t is now shifted as well as scaled right so we have to perform some shifting and scaling <coughs> so for representing h, h of t, t minus ta is, is a function of two ta. variables t and ta and we should consider h of t minus ta to be a function of ta because ta is a function of integral so h of t is first represented in terms of h of ta right so independent variable uh, is now ta instead of t now uh, we need h of t minus ta, right? So first, uh, we have transformed the independent variable from t to ta. Now, we have to uh, time scale the function, right? Instead of ta, we write down h of minus ta, right? The next step, h of t is time scaled by the factor of minus 1, which is also called the time reversal, to obtain h of minus t. So h of t is now time scaled and it is the ta is multiplied with minus 1 to obtain h of minus ta. Right. <coughs> so when you apply time reversal the signal is folded at t around t equal to 0 or ta equal to 0 right, around its origin. So the origin is 0 here and it is folded it means 1 now would be minus 1. Right. So here it is folded around 0, around origin. Now uh, we have to t apply time shifting, right? Because it is h of minus t and we need h of t minus t. Now h of minus t is shifted by t units to obtain h of t minus t. So h of minus ta is shifted by t units to obtain h of t minus ta right so graphically h of minus ta is shifted by t units to obtain h of t minus ta now remember when t is positive signal or the h of minus ta would be delayed and when t is negative h of minus ta would be time advanced right as you can see here when t is positive you are actually performing delay function you are delaying h of minus ta and when t is negative you are actually performing time advanced property or you are actually advancing h minus ta now we have transformed our variables x of t and h of t as per this equation so x of t is transformed to x of ta by simply replacing t by ta and uh, similarly h of t is uh, transformed into h of t minus ta by applying different uh, signaling properties for example first t was replaced by ta then ta was scaled by minus 1 then h of minus ta was shifted by t to produce h of t minus ta and remember t is not a variable of integration right ta is the variable of integration we are taking integral of this x of ta into h of t minus ta with respect to ta not with respect to t 
so t remains constant during the integration process so in convolution process we first choose a value of t and uh, substitute that value of t here for example t equal to 1 2 3 5 minus 1 minus 2 whatever and compute the integral right and that would give you the value of response at that particular time for example if you put t equal to 0 you will get y of 0 if you put t equal to minus 1 you will get y of minus 1 right so first choose a value of t and evaluate the integral then next pick another value of t and repeat the process and you have to repeat the process until mm, you know uh, you get some non-zero values and each time you choose the value of t you are getting actually point on y of t curve right so when all the values of y of t are domain then you can actually plot those values on a graph paper to find out the response y of t you can combine all the responses together to determine the value of y of t now let us choose the value of t equal to 5 as an example and uh, find out the value of uh, y of 5 or response of the system at t equal to 5 so uh, y of 5 would be equal to x of t into h of 5 minus t and integral from minus infinity to infinity now <coughs> before substituting the value of x of t we need to shift h of minus t by 5 units t equal to 5 and when and t is positive so h of minus t would be delayed by 5 units right so this is the h of uh, minus t representation graphically so when it, this function is delayed by 5 units so minus 1 be shifted to 4 and 0 would be delayed by 5 units so it would be equal to 5 so this is h of 5 minus t now we have to multiply this function with of so the tar. next step is multiply h of 5 minus ta with x of ta so x of ta is from minus 1 to 1 and h of 5 minus ta is 4 to 5 right so both the functions are occurring at different times right so there is no overlapping area so product of these two functions would be simply 0 right because there is no overlapping area so when you multiply x of ta which, which is only between minus 1 and 1 and h of 5 minus ta which is between 4 and 5 the product of these two functions would be 0 so y of 5 is basically 0 or the area under x of ta and into h of 5 minus ta is basically 0 now let us choose another value let's choose t equal to 0 so y of 0 now would be equal to integral of x of t x of ta into h of minus ta from minus infinity to infinity so it when t is equal to 0 h of minus ta won't be shifted right so h of minus ta now would be multiplied as it is with x of ta now you can see there is some overlapping area right this signal is start from minus 1 and x of t also start with minus 1 this uh, h of minus ta ends at 0 this ends at 1 so the product from 0 to 1 would be 0 again because h of minus ta is 0 from 0 to 1 right? but uh, the product of these two functions between minus 1 and 0 would be some non-zero value so what would be the product let's uh, find out uh, when h of minus t and x of ta h of minus ta and x of ta are multiplied together uh, you get this function right and the amplitude of x of ta is 2 so amplitude of h of minus ta and amplitude of x of ta would be multiplied so you get 4 uh, amplitude of 4 and uh, time would be from minus 1 to 0 and uh, you can represent the product of x of minus star and x of star 
using this equation so basically this is the ramp function starting from minus 1 and ending at 0 t equal to 0 tau equal to 0 and of amplitude 4 so it is actually ramp function having slope 4 and time advanced by 1 second or 1 unit so it is equal to 4 into tau plus 1 Now uh, we know the product of x of ta and s of t minus ta is equal to 4 ta plus 1. Right? So now substituting the values into the into this uh, integral. Now integration would be from minus 1 to 0 because before minus 1 we know via uh, output is 0 and after 0 it is product is 0. Right? So integral from minus 1 to 0 of uh, 4 ta plus 1 data integrating this function you will get uh, 4 is constant is taken out of the integral and uh, the integration <coughs> of ta with respect to ta is t square tau square upon 2 now similarly one let us choose ta another value of t that is equal to minus 1 and we find out the response of the system two. when t equal to minus 1 now the h of minus star is shifted by minus 1 unit right so t is negative here so time advance property would be applied so h of minus star is advanced by 1 unit right so you can see minus 1 is now at minus 2 and 0 is now equal to minus 1 here right so amplitude is still 2 and this function is basically now h of minus 1 and minus tau so this is h of minus tau shifted by minus 1 unit so now you have to multiply now you can this see with x of that uh, x of tau is non zero between minus 1 and 1 and h of minus 1 minus tau is non zero between minus 1 and minus 2 so again there is no common area there is no overlapping in the signal so the product of these two functions would be again 0 so we can say y, y of minus 1 is also equal to 0 and likewise any value of t less than minus 1 would produce product equal to 0 because there will be no overlapping area so in other words if signal is further shifted towards left there won't be any overlapping area right so we can say that as far as the negative time is concerned minus one value is the limit and uh, any value less than minus one would produce the same result right now choosing some value which is uh, greater than minus one which is equal to minus 0 0.5 so, so when minus 0 0.5 value is chosen it means now h of minus star would be time advanced by minus 0 0.5 units so when h of minus star is shifted by minus 0 0.5 units the zero value is shifted to minus 0 0.5 and this minus 1 is shifted to minus 1.5 now this h of minus 0 0.5 minus star would be multiplied with x of star now you can see there is some overlapping in these two functions uh, h of minus 0 0.5 minus star is non zero between minus 1 and 0 0.5 and this is also non zero between minus 1 and 0 0.5 other than that either this function is zero or that function is zero so the overlapping area is only between minus 1 and minus 0 0.5 right. so if we plot these together on the same scale you can see that the signals are overlapping between time slot minus 1 and minus 0 0.5 other than that either x of tau is 0 or h of minus 0 0.5 minus tau is 0 
so product of these two functions would be non zero between time minus 1 and minus 0 0.5 so between minus 1 and minus 0 0.5 amplitude of both functions would be applied amplitude of this function is always 2 it's constant right so whatever the amplitude of this function is uh, one in the red color would be multiplied by 2 so the result would be this function right at minus 1 it value would be 2 and at minus 0 0.5 it value would be 4 because at minus 0 0.5 the value of this function in the red color is 2 and it is multiplied with the value of the function in the blue color which is also 2 2 multiplied by 2 would be 4 now this is the result of the product that we have obtained and this is again a ram function right increasing ram function having maximum amplitude and uh, this is ramp function shifted by my uh, 1.5 units time it means shifted towards left or time advanced by 1.5 units and the slope of the function is 4 so this is the mathematical representation of uh, this signal and now let us evaluate this integral by substituting the value of h of minus 0 0.5 minus star and x of star which is this one 4 into top plus 1.5 now substitute the values of uh, this function which is equal to this and evaluate the integral and uh, after evaluating the integral you can find out the value of y equal to minus 0 0.5 which is equal and to now let us 1.5 uh, some positive value of t which is uh, 0 0.5 for example when positive values are chosen then h of minus star is basically delayed so h of minus star would be delayed by 0 0.5 unit right so 0 would be shifted to 0 0.5 and minus 1 would be shifted to minus 0 0.5 and uh, this is the graphical representation of h of minus star when it is shifted or delayed by 0 0.5 units now we have to multiply this function with x of star so when this function would be multiplied with x of star now you can see they are complete overlap right? this signal is completely overlapping this signal this function between time slot minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 this one minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 so product of these two functions would be non zero between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and, and would be zero elsewhere so again and uh, the amplitude of uh, x of ta is 2 constant and whatever the amplitude of this function in the red color is it would be multiplied with 2 Right, so the maximum value of this function would be 4 at t equal to 0 0.5 so this is the product that we have obtained when these two functions are multiplied together now this is again a ramp function starting from minus 0 0.5 and ending at 0 0.5 and amplitude of 4 so again the slope of this ramp function is 4 and it is uh, uh, you know time was by 0 0.5 units now substitute the value of uh, x of ta into h of 0 0.5 minus ta into this integral and uh, compute the value of y of 0 0.5 so after substitution uh, the limit of the integral now would be minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 so evaluating the integral and substituting the limits of the integral you get y 0 0.5 equal to similarly Two. we can find out the values of y of t for different values of t uh, for example 1 1.5 and 2 uh, which i am leaving as a homework for you and uh, any value greater than 2 would result in y of t equal to 0 because when t is greater than 2 again 
there will be no overlapping area between x of ta and h of minus ta. So, y of t is basically non-zero when t is between minus 1 and 2 and other than that y of t is values are 0. Now, the entire process of uh, convolution is uh, demonstrated in this figure. All the values are plotted for example, at t equal to minus 1 y of minus 1 was 0 and similarly at t equal to minus 0 0.5 it was equal to minus uh, sorry it was equal to 1.5 and t equal to 0 it was equal to 2 similarly at t equal to 0 0.5 it was equal to 2 and uh, these three values I have left homework for you at t equal to 1 it is again equal to 2 and at t equal to 2 it is 0 and any value greater than t equal to 2 it is again 0 and uh, connecting all these together you get the response of the system when rectangular pulse of width 2 is applied as input to the system and this is how you can compute the response of the system using convolution. Now method. in this slide the simple animated demonstration of uh, convolution operation is given. Here two functions are being convoluted together f of t and g of t f of t is the input and g of t is basically the impulse response so when whenever the whenever the overlapping area is non zero you can see the output is non zero and it is increasing as long as overlapping area is increasing and it becomes maximum when both the functions are overlapping completely and it remains maximum until the overlapping is also maximum and it would start to decrease when overlapping area also start to decrease which is expected at tau equal to 2 now you can see at tau equal to 2 the overlapping area is decreasing and uh, hence the output is also decreasing and it would completely would be equal to 0 when this pulse reaches to equal to 3 so at t equal to 3 the response of the system would be completely 0 so this is what the convolution operation is now let us solve another similar example in which uh, we are given uh, impulse response of an RC low pass filter by this equation h of t equal to 1 upon RC and exponential of minus t upon RC and multiply by u of t where u of t is the unit step function and the graph of this equation given in this figure and uh, you can see because of this uh, uh, function is multiplied with u of t so it is 0 when t is less than 0 and it is exponential when t is equal to or greater than 0 and we have to find out the step response of the RC low pass filter step input is given by this uh, graph you already know that the step function unit step function is equal to 1 when t or ta equal to 0 or greater than 0 and it is equal to 0 when tau is less than 0. So, we have to find out the response of the filter when in this input is applied, right? when a step input is applied. It is called a step response of the system. So, we can use the convolution integral to find out the step response. The convolution integral of a system is given by this equation. The output of the RC low pass filter is V out and it is equal to multiplication of x of ta into h of t minus ta integral from minus infinity to infinity. Now let us substitute the values of uh, x of t and h of t minus ta. x of t x of t would be simply x of ta and h of t minus ta actually shifted and time scale version of this function. So 1 upon R C is constant e power minus now would be written as minus t 
minus tau divided by rc and multiply by u into t minus tau d tau we can simplify the integral further by eliminating x of tau because we know x of tau is equal to 1 when tau is equal to greater than 0 and it is equal to 0 when tau is less than 0 so we can simplify the integral in this form v out now would be equal to from 0 to infinity and x of tau is equal to 1 and rest of the function is written as it is now further simplification is possible uh, now let us consider this unit itself function it is shifted unit itself function I, and the value of this shifted unit itself function is equal to 0 when t minus tau is less than 0 and it is equal to 1 when t minus tau is greater than or equal to 1 right. so for negative value of t v out is 0 and for positive values of t the unit is a function will be 1 when tau is less than t and would be 0 when tau is greater than t right. so this simplifies the integral further in this form now we can rewrite as v out equal to integral limit from 0 to t 1 upon rc e power minus t minus t divided by rc d tau. Now we Solving can the integral solve this integral and substituting the limit would result in this equation v out equal to 1 minus e exponent of minus t upon rc when t is greater than 0. So this is the step response of uh, rc low pass filter now these are some exercise problems for you you have to compute the convolution of uh, x1 of t and x2 of t x1 of t is given by this graph it is equal to a pulse of magnitude 3 and the time width 2 seconds which is at minus 1 to 1 and uh, x2 is another rectangular pulse of uh, again 2 seconds and of amplitude 2 and it start from 0 to 2 similarly uh, another two functions x1 and x2 find out the convolution of these two functions another exercise problem for you a system has an impulse response given by this equation h of t equal to 4 exponent of minus 4 t multiplied by unit step function and uh, we have to find out the response of the system when this input is applied it is a rectangular pulse and uh, it, it has a value t minus 1 upon 4 multiplied by 2 so it is a rectangular pulse which is being applied as an input to the system and the pulse response of the system is given by this equation so find out the response of the system y of t the answer is given here so give it a try and uh, if you have any difficulty you can ask so that is the end of uh, the lecture number 8, 8 9 and 10 uh, kindly go through this lecture and if you find any difficulty uh, you can contact me on my email address given in the first slide and uh, if you have any question if you have any difficulty in understanding anything let me know and we'll discuss it in the upcoming interactive session on coming wednesday thank you very much